All right, so here's a lesson on uh, consumer surplus. So I changed some of the values um, just to fit, let me get some light on here, just to fit your My Math Lab. So I went through the My Math Lab and I wanted to make sure that the variables that they use are the same variables that I use. So in the introduc introductory um, consumer surplus, producer surplus, I use different values. So I wanted to uh, make sure that you have the right ones. So instead of B, so in my introductory one, uh, I use that as B. In my math lab, they use it as P with a bar over it. Over here, um, in the introductory video, I used A. They use X with a bar over it. So it means the same thing. This is still the number of products. This is the market price, okay? And then with our consumers, we're gonna just stick with consumer surplus. Consumer surplus, we're gonna use the demand equation minus the market price, okay? So here is the formula for consumer surplus. You're gonna take your X bar value. So you will have to find this value. The P bar value is given to you, okay? So let me give you an example. So here's the, the question. Uh, find the consumer surplus at a price level, so P bar of $150, for the price demand equation below, and then they give you the price demand equation. So here is our demand equation. Um, it is 200 minus 0.05x, okay? So here is our uh, market price. Here is the demand equation, and we wanna know what's the uh, consumer surplus. So again, if you don't remember what consumer surplus is, consumer surplus is the happy place where a consumer is willing to pay more for something, but only has to pay the market price. So this is their happy area, okay? So this is what they have saved because they're willing to pay more, but they don't have to pay more, okay? So this is just area between two curves. The upper curve is your demand function. The lower curve is your market price, okay? So you're gonna have to do one little um, calculation so if you notice, you're given the P bar, right? You're given the 150. So this number right here, I'm gonna use this as my example. This number right here is 150. What you don't have, you have X, but you don't have the X bar. In other words, you don't have this value here. You do have this value. So what you have to do is you have to plug 150 into your demand function so you can get the X out. So here is our demand function. We're gonna plug 150 as our demand, and we're going to solve for x. So this is always gonna be your first step. You have to be able to find this value, all right? So we know it starts at zero, but we don't know how high up it goes. So we do have to find. So here's our zero. We're looking for this value. Okay, so these are the two endpoints that we need to find. So you just solve for x. So that goes away. I end up with negative 50 equals a negative 0.05x. I divide both sides by negative 0.05, and I get x equals 1,000. Okay, so this is my x bar, all right? What you just found was this value right here. So what we do know now is, I'm gonna erase this, is now we know that our integral goes from zero to 1,000, all right? So you will not be given that value. You have to find the value. So you do that by using your demand function, plugging 150 into here, and then solving for x, okay? So now we're good to go. Here is our consumer surplus. We're gonna take our demand function so remember, our upper function minus the lower function. So I'm gonna rewrite this. So my consumer surplus goes from zero to 1,000. My demand function is 200 minus 0.05x. And now I'm gonna subtract off my market price. And then dx. Okay, now you guys are good to go. 
you have everything you need to be able to solve for this. So you're going to find the integral between 0 and 1,000. We're going to simplify this. So 200 minus 150 is 50 minus 0 0.05x dx. Okay. So now we're going to find our derivative. I'm sorry, our antiderivative. Excuse me, antiderivative. So 50, the antiderivative is 50x. Here, I'm going to add 1 and divide by the new exponent. So I get minus, so 0 0.05 divided by 2, I believe, is 0 0.025. Is 0 0.025 x squared. OK, and then we are going to evaluate between 0 and 1,000. All right, so give myself enough room. So I have 50 times 1,000 minus 0 0.025 times 1,000 squared. So there is my, when I plug in 1,000, and then I'm going to subtract off when I plug in 0. OK, so again, whenever you plug in 0, you should see that it's automatically at 0. So 50 times 1,000 is 50,000. 0 0.025 times 1,000 squared is 25,000. OK, so that's in this bracket, my first bracket. Second bracket is just 0, because everything goes to 0. So 50,000 minus 25,000, I have a consumer surplus of $25,000. OK, so here's what this means. All the people that are willing to pay more then the $150 cumulatively is saving about $25,000. Now, as a business owner, if you have this amount and you know that you are saving your consumers $25,000, you can use this as a marketing tool. You have made all of your consumers $25,000 happier. Now, do they actually get the $25,000? No, it's a happy number. But it is a marketing tool, OK? So you can say, hey, my company makes people very happy. We have saved our consumers $25,000 because we charge less than what they're willing to pay. That's consumer surplus.